All right, seems to be um, a few more people now, so I will start. Sorry if um, sorry if this isn't uh, the best lecture. Um, obviously, I'm quite new to doing this online. I've never done it before. I've got a little pad here that I can draw stuff or accidentally do stuff like I just did then. So apologies in advance for anything like that. Firstly, I just want to say hey to everyone and hope, hope you're all well. Um, hopefully no one has fallen ill or anyone you guys love or, or close to you. Um, and again, with the exams, if any of you haven't heard, they will be postponed uh, until further notice, just because within this um, lockdown period, we can't actually hold any exams. As you can imagine, we can't meet up in a room and actually do the exam itself. Um, but, you know, if you if we do some revision, which we will do today, I hope you guys had a look at some of it that I, um, I sent through last week, um, though I'll go over a little bit of that today as well. Um, yeah, just revise slowly during this, this lockdown period and you should be sweet when we do end up having the exam. I'm assuming what will probably happen is that one of the weeks that we'll be doing teaching uh, next term, they'll just replace with an exam week and um, we'll probably have to make up for some of the time uh, other than that or maybe bits and pieces will be left out uh, from term two, maybe some of the unimportant stuff. Not entirely sure yet, that's just my sort of, my guess. Um, and this will be the last week um, of teaching. I think you guys have one week break uh, next week and then the following week we'll do the same as this today. I'll, I'll do the live stream again, uh, but I'll email you all about that um, before it happens. So we'll start off and we'll Get rid of all this. Um, to begin with, I just want to kind of go over some some questions in assignment two. There were a few people who um, sent through um, some questions regarding the assignment two. I could see that some of the questions could be a little bit confusing or weren't worded very right or just in general needed some help. So I'll go through just a few things, not not too much, but some things that maybe help you out with some of the harder questions uh, or things that aren't as clear. Um, and I will go through a similar question to question 12, which is the one at the end that's got uh, the circuit with the resistors and you're, you're basically trying to find a whole bunch of things um, I'll go through a very similar example to that um, to kind of guide you guys through how we look at the entire thing. Okay, so we'll just first start off. Uh, one of your questions that you guys have, um, it's all about power and you have this unit here, they say, oh, that's not going to work if I don't put a pencil on. Um, Oh, this is, this is strange, guys. Okay, it says E, and that is just your energy used per hour. So it's basically your watts, so your energy used per hour. Now, that can also be um, displayed as E is equal to the power times your time, I think, oh yeah, that is. Um, and this T here actually has to be in hours. So we, we, we can't, oh, you can put T in minutes and stuff, but you have to convert it. That's what I'm trying to get at. The conversion is the most important part here. So this must be in hours. So say you have, um, Let's just say 10 minutes. We know that that is equal to one sixth of an hour. And the reason we know that is because if we do six times 10 minutes, it's equal to 60 minutes. That didn't work. And we all know 60 minutes is one hour. So that's just a, a quick little thing there just to help you out, um, just in case. I think we didn't go through class what E actually meant, uh, but it's just your energy use per hour. Um, all of this will be going online to the, the same YouTube 
channel so any of this here that you do miss you the video will be up there so you can always go back through it and have a look at it so i will i will kind of uh, not rush through everything but i won't sit and ask too many questions i'll ask some questions at the end uh, and then uh, anything else you can just go through uh, and you guys can always email me as well some of you have email, emailed me recently which is great um, obviously I, ha I have a lot of spare time at the moment as well not heaps but you know I've, I've got a lot more than normal so yeah fire through any questions that you guys do have um, at any time but we will carry on for now that's the first little one just to make sure you guys all understand what he actually meant Uh, also, just like if we were in class, um, if I do make a mistake or you are thinking what is going on right now, please just send something through on the chat. I'll be checking that because, um, you know, I can make mistakes. We all do. Okay, so for the next part, just want to look at efficiency. So efficiency, oops. Can you run like this? It's a little weird looking uh, N. And I'll just write here EFF. Now that just means efficiency. So when we're looking at efficiency, it's always whatever the output is divided by your input. Now you do times 100. Now that's just to give us a percentage. Now with, with efficiency, you can always think of, um, a good way to think about it is, is to, to just do it. So let's say you weren't entirely sure what it was and you thought it was input over output. Now this, this kind of thinking uh, applies to just about anything. Let's say that's what you, you did think it was, and your input was, I don't know, let's say it was eight, <clears throat> and your output was seven. Now th these numbers here can be anything, it could be watts, let's just say it's watts, just to make it clear. So you input eight watts, it goes through a system, say like a motor, and your output was uh, seven watts. Now well, that's a pretty decent motor. If you times it by a hundred, I'll just get my calculator here. So if you look, if we just do eight divided by seven times 100, you're gonna get a really, really big number. We're gonna get a hundred, I'll just close that. 114%. If you guys look at that, and this is what I meant by, you know, if you get a, a question, a good way to remember things is sometimes just to try it if you're a little bit confused. 114% efficiency. Does that sound right? That there, does it sound right? No, it really, really does not sound right. You, you're not going to get more out than you put in. You're not going to have something that's more efficient than 100. In fact, 100 is not even really possible. We're always going to get something less than 100%. Um, so yeah, that, that thinking kind of applies to a lot of the questions that we do have. You can try it and if, if your answer comes out a weird number like 114, look at it and go, no, 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 I'm doing something wrong. It's not possible. So that's just the efficiency part there. Uh, but yeah, I just want to point out that part of things was to sometimes look at your question and say, does that look right? Is that, is that even possible? Uh, you know, say you have uh, a voltage source somewhere, it's like three volts and you're getting out a million or something. That's, it's ridiculous. It's not possible. So you got to reevaluate what you've been doing and try to come up with the correct answer. Or at least it's kind of a process of elimination sometimes, as it can be with learning. Oh, there's little dots go. Oh, well, hopefully that's not too annoying. Okay. Um, I'll also, I will be doing the roll pretty shortly. I'll just do a little bit more of this, and then we'll call the roll, maybe have just a five-minute break, um, and then...
we'll carry on. So yeah, today won't be uh, the full two hours. I'll just give you guys all the lecture content. And then after that, um, I expect you guys to do some of your work. We will be able to see uh, how much you kind of get done online. Because as I said in the email, everything is still... Um, does still need to be done as per usual obviously with a lot of time at home uh, that should be possible to do but if you need any help again please send me an email um, so okay we'll move on to question 12 why is that not going away so I'll just put up here question 12 similar So it won't be exactly the same, but I'll do something similar just to kind of give you guys an idea of how to approach that problem because it does look a little bit hairy uh, and there are some term terminology in there that can be kind of confusing, even for myself when I read it to begin with. So uh, firstly, we'll go over the difference between uh, vSource and vTerminal. Now vTerminal was used in your question and I'll just write that here. So usually in class with you guys, I write something, I'll draw something like this, V source, and that'll go off to wherever. Now we know when I'm writing that down, that that is how much voltage is going through the circuit. But because uh, that is not exactly how it works, you guys remember we talked about internal resistance. I'll draw this up here. This is also how they draw it. Oh, didn't go. This is how they draw it in the question, so you'll be able to relate. Wow, this is taking me way longer than I thought. Okay, here we go. So I'll just do two big things here just to say that they're different. Um, so we have part of a circuit here. Now this, I'll call our I for our internal. And this bit here we'll have, I believe in the question it was a battery. This bit would help. That was positive here and it was negative here. Um, yeah, we'll write that up here. Now that's V. That's for internal. Okay, so the difference between these two here are what the question shows us. In the question, it says that we have, oh, it says VB. I'll, I'll write this out. VI is equal to VB. Just so we're not talking about. So if you're looking at what's going on, please refer to question 12 um, of your assignment two. That's equal to 24 volts. And your RI was equal to 2 ohms, I believe. That's right. Okay, so V terminal. Oh, sorry, guys, that's a mistake there. V terminal was very similar to what. I normally write down as a voltage source. It's what we actually see throughout the entire circuit. So that would be like saying from there to here. So we've got this minus here and this positive here. Again, remember this part is just separate. I've only just written that down. And that's what they're referring to as V terminal. It's the actual voltage that we see that comes out either end of here and goes into a loaded circuit. When we have a circuit that has resistors on their uh, capacitors, anything else that would make a, a circuit loaded, something that would draw current. So to figure out what V terminal is, which is like again, what we draw in class, you know, the actual voltage source, you'd just be figuring out what VI, minus whatever the volt drop across here is. So if we look at this whole thing as a battery, 
and we can say that V-terminal is what is the output of this when we actually put it into a loaded circuit. We know that we've got this voltage here, but we know that this here, this little resistance, the internal resistance, does consume some voltage. So I'll write this again. Now I'm going to write this V term just for short. If you're wondering what that means, that's just V terminal. That's going to be equal to VI minus the total current times Ri. Now that there is this volt drop, right? You know, we know that V is equal to I times R. So in this case, if you want to know what the voltage drop across here is, you do your total current, which they do give you in that question, times that. So basically, at the end of this, and I'm obviously not going to write down the answer, but V terminal should be less than VI. So this here should be higher, a higher voltage than V terminal. So always this voltage here will always be higher to begin with and it will output a little bit less. And that's similar to like we we're saying with the efficiency before. You know, you're never going to get out more than you get, uh, than you put in. So this is putting in a certain amount and we're getting out a little bit less. And that's because of this internal resistance. Okay, so I just need to explain that first, but before we actually get on to anything else, because um, I found that was quite, um, we only covered that very briefly, and I feel that uh, that needed to be covered again. I'll keep that up there. Okay, now I'm going to actually write down a uh, the, the question, the similar question. Oh, wow, that is... Not good. That's a little bit better. Okay, much better. Oh, wow. Sorry, guys. That was not meant to happen. Okay. How do I... Sorry guys, I'm actually trying to figure this out. Okay, perfect. No, that doesn't work. Okay, so don't worry about that. So I'm still trying to figure out this this program. I've only looked it up yesterday, so. Okay, so I'll draw up a circuit to begin with. Uh, sorry guys, I shouldn't have done that there. It's a little bit harder. There we go, right over here. Again, apologies if this is a little bit hairy. I'm not used to using these systems, but we'll make do. That is way too big, but never mind. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Not making these very evenly sized, am I? Yeah, I'm going to try. Zoom in just a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, sorry guys. I think I just made that smaller. The twit test. Okay, it's not too bad. If you guys can't read it, just let me know. Oh, that is horrible. So 
So guys, I am failing really bad here. But yeah, if, if you want a cleaner picture, just refer to your question 12 and your assignment two. Now I'm gonna write R I on this. I think in your, uh, in, in question 12, they say R5, but I'm just writing this down just so you understand it's the internal resistance here. And then here, I will write it as VI. Remember, I think in your question two, it's VB. And obviously I will be changing a few of these. Uh, oh, wow. Just changing a few of the, um, the numberings basically. So it's not exactly the same. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, so we have this little middle bit. Sorry, this actually looks so horrible, guys. Okay, wow, that yeah really doesn't look too good. But I'm assuming you guys probably get the picture. Well, hopefully. If you don't, just tell me. Okay, so that's R4. 21. And this will be R2. So equal to 10. I remember these are all just in ohms. I assume you guys realize that by now. 20. Okay, I think that's all we need for that part. Ah, oh, there we go, that's much nicer. Actually, you guys might want to see all that. There we go. Okay, we'll start off here with just, oh, uh, sorry. We will write down A. Okay, so for A, we're trying to find the resistance total. Okay, so remember we were saying in, <clears throat> in class between uh, series and resistance circuits. So if we mix these two together, we would get one resistor left over and you can see that would be in a series circuit. This little bit here, we can see is in parallel. But do you remember in class with the mixed circuits um, weak, I showed that you can change this into just one that would be in series with each other. There would be a total resistance here. So all we need to know here is that 0 0.5 amps is going through the whole circuit. So that gets 0 0.5. This whole part gets 0 0.5. This one gets 0 0.5. So to find the, the total resistance, um, all we need to know is the voltage, which we have. And remember, there is the difference between the voltage of the terminal and the voltage of this internal part here. Now, with the this part here, because we have the internal resistance, what we can do is just pretend for now this is the voltage source that I normally draw in class. Or well, this is, yeah, the actual voltage, and this is just part of the circuit. This is just a resistor within this whole circuit here. So knowing that, if we know that the V is equal to 20, we can write down, um, or just to begin with, V divided by I is what we're looking at, you know? And when we manipulate, um, Ohm's law. In this case, that's going to be 20 divided by 0 0.5, which is just equal to 40, 40 ohms. So that's how we find the, the total resistance. For this part, that's quite, that's nice and easy. Now you could always find out each and every single one, 
though this one is hasn't been found yet. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could. The thing that I was going to point out here with a question like this, the best thing to do is actually read through what other things the question is asking you to do. So there's quite a lot of questions in this. A few of them ask you to find pretty much the voltage between here, the voltage drop over here, the voltage drop here. They ask you what R1 is here. So if you wanted, you can do things the way I like to put it, the, the long way, but because most of the questions are actually asking, you know, what these things are, it's not exactly the long way. It's actually just figuring out the right answer sooner. But for now with this one, I will just do that as 40 because that's a, a nice uh, way to start. Now for B, they ask, there we go, they ask what the total resistance is here. So do you remember we said in class uh, for the resistance there, the equivalent resistance. So um, now I'm going to draw this here. I'm going to say 2 3. Now, when I'm doing that, actually, I'll do that. I don't know if you guys remember that saying uh, the resistance, re ah, sorry, <clears throat> the resistance of 2 in parallel with 3. Now we can see that's R2. This here is R3. So they're in parallel with each other. So we know that that's what that is meaning. It doesn't mean divided or anything like that. Now you remember for this, um, this is the, the nice easy trick. We can do just 10 times 20 divided by 10 plus. Oh, didn't work. There we go. That also didn't work. There we go. 20. And from that there, because we only have two of them, remember, we can use this um, little method. So now that's going to be 200. That here is 30. So you guys in your own time can figure that out if you need or put it on the calculator. That's equal to 6.66 ohms. So that's how we find what the equivalent resistance is over here. Sorry, guys, I'll just take a quick uh, drink. Okay, so next, yep, like I remember that they want us to find what the resistance here is. Now, for this one here, we know what the resistance total is. Now, do you guys remember in a series circuit, the total resistance is just that resistor, that resistor, the equivalent resistance here, plus this resistance there. So you're just adding them all up obviously after we make that an equivalent resistor, which we now have. So to find out what just this missing piece is, what we're going to do, so for R1, we're going to take the total, which we know is 40 up here. We're going to start minusing all the other ones we know. And the answer should be what is left, which will be what R1 is. So we'll start off and we'll take this one here, which is or this equivalent, sorry, on here. That is 6.66, and we're gonna be minusing this 21 ohms. And lastly, the internal resistance, which is just two. And then for that we find it is 10.34 ohms, I guess. Draw this a little bit closer next time. Um, so that's that's it there. We just figured it out as ten point three four. Uh, so D, I think they're asking the power of R four. They're wondering how do we how do we find the power here? Now there's a few ways we could do this. Just to begin with, um, one way if if we were only, if I would just ask you that question and no other questions, the way I'd suggest using the, the formula, sorry, I suggest using is power equals to I squared times R because you don't actually need to know what the volt drop across this part is here because obviously we know what the, the voltage is that's going to be coming out, but that's going to be split between this one, this one, this equivalent, and this one here. So... You could easily just go, I know what the current is, which is over here. 
I know what the resistance is and you could figure it out. And for this part here, which I get, it was 5.25 watts. But because we have a whole bunch of questions coming up and they're going to be asking us uh, what the voltage is across the across this resistor here as well. We may as well just figure it out now. So I'll leave that up for here, for now, sorry, up here. And I'll write over here what we'll do. Um, so if we want to find what the voltage is over here, we know on a series circuit again, that this current here will be consistent over here. So 0 0.5 here, 0 0.5 for this equivalent one, and 0 0.5 across here. So we can simply use Ohm's law to figure out uh, sorry, not Ohm's law. This one, oh yes, we are using Ohm's law. We're trying to find V of R4. Now that is equal to 0 0.5 times 21. And that's just equal to 10.5 volts. Okay, so now because we've figured that one out, now we know that power is also equal to V times I. In this case, the voltage we're looking at is not this voltage here. Just in case anyone was getting confused between that, we're looking for the voltage just across this resistor because we're trying to find what the power dissipation for just this one part is. So we, we have what that is now. And I'll write that in there. R4. Now we know that is 10.5. Oh, sorry guys, that looks... Shocking, 10.5 times 0 0.5. Now, we can see here that is 5.25, the first way we figured it out. And also this way, it's 5.25 watts. I remember power, we were using watts. Okay, I might just, actually here we can, yep, go over here now. Okay, so for E, it's asking us what the power dissipation total will be throughout the whole circuit. Now this one's, this one's rather easy because we know for the whole circuit that 20 volts is being pushed through here, including this resistance here. And we know what the total resistance is. So all we're gonna do is, uh, sorry, I should write down what we're figuring out first, that would help. Know why that always happens. So P, I should put that of uh, four. So power total or PT. It's just going to be equal to twenty times zero point five amps. So it's a twenty volts. That's our amperage. So it's going to be ten watts in total. Now you'll see through it, figuring out the rest of the power dissipation that the, the total is 10, that every other part should add up to 10. So this one here, R4, is taking a massive chunk of power actually. It's using more than half, just more than half. Okay, so for F, the next one. Um, so this one is asking what the V terminal is. I'll write this down again. V terminal is like finding out what the resistance is as if this is the whole battery. It's not just asking what the small resistance is here, which is the internal voltage. It's asking if we would just put this into one battery and we were to, instead of having these dotted lines, just get rid of all this here and just have a, a minus and a plus, how much voltage would be going across there. That's what's actually going through just these three here. I know that can be kind of confusing because we're talking about before this is part of the circuit now, but what it's asking us is if that was not part of the circuit and you were just imagine like filling in all these dotted lines and we were just looking at a, uh, a voltage source or just a straight voltage out. So that's the V term. And just in case you're wondering, obviously it's flowing from negative to positive. So it's like saying what, what's the whole 
drop there. What's what's the entire amount? So all we need to do for this one is we need to know how much voltage is being supplied by this internal part and how much is being used by this internal resistance. So that's what we looked at before. So we know that we have, so V term, again that just means terminal, is going to be equal to VI, which is 20, minus how much ever is being dropped across this here. Now, because we know that the total current is 0 0.5, we can say 0 0.5 times 2, which is its resistance, the internal resistance. And I'm sure you guys can see here, 0 0.5 times 2 is just 1. So it'd be 20 minus 1. So that's why we're going to see 19 volts for this case across here. That's how much these three would see if you weren't including this part here, which we don't normally, but we're, we're trying to get you to think about, you know, what's actually inside a battery. But for the most times you'd be saying that there's 19 volts here, you'd see that across these three, obviously shared because it's in series. But that's, that's what the question is, it's asking what that will be. So it's actually just for that part. So we know that's 19 volts now. Okay, so I'm gonna move this a little bit. Hopefully we can keep that in frame. Oh, it's a bit hard to read. Um, let's do that for now. <clears throat> Actually, I'll start over here now. That'll be a little bit easier. Okay, so, oh, did it again. Okay. So this is G. Of a G we are asked to find okay so we're asked to find maybe we'll go up just a little bit oh there's not how to do it here we go we're asked to find how much voltage is going through this parallel part here so obviously you have a volt drop across this you have a volt drop across that you have a volt drop across this now we need to know what the volt drop across this entire part here is now we remember parallel if there's a voltage here at this point, that gets equally distributed. Uh, sorry, yeah, equally. So this side will have the exact same voltage as this side. They will both, so let's say just hypothetically right now that it's uh, five volts. Five volts will be going through R2 and five volts is going through R3. So that's how the parallel works. Remember, so series shared, this, this 20 is shared between this part that part, the equivalent here, and this part, in parallel, it's, it's not shared. That's just the exact same. Okay. Um, and that, that's going to come up in a, another question. I thought I'd share that now. Okay, so earlier on, we figured out, and I think it's this one here, the 6.6. .6. I'll just go up a little bit. Yeah, that's right. So the resistance equivalent of here is equal to 6.6 .6 ohms. <clears throat> so for an, a, a second, we'll imagine that this is just one equivalent resistor and we'll find out what the voltage drop across that equivalent would be. And just like we did with R4, all we'll be doing is we know that the equivalent resistance was 6.66, .66. make that a little bit bigger. And then we're just times it by the current, which is 0 0.5. So we know that this here, which is 3.3 volts, 3.3 volts will start at this point and it will go through here, but also through here. So this part at top will get 3.3, this part here will get 3.3. Okay, now for H, I think they're asking about finding, um, uh, I'm just wondering whether we're running out of space here. I'll just start H here. H is trying to find out what the um, current will be. Actually, you know, I think G and H are both trying to find the current, sorry. Um, so this part I think is, is not actually the question itself, but I'll just solve the current for both uh, this part and this part in question H. So 
so far the current going through R2. Now remember in parallel the current is shared. So if we have 0 0.5 amps here, which we do because we know it's a series, so this sorry, we know the whole part of the circuit is series, only this part is parallel. We know there's 0 0.5 through here. We know there's a total of 0 0.5 through here. So this current plus this current has to equal 0 0.5. So that's what we're going to do. So in this case, again, we know now that at this point here, we have 3.3 volts. So 3.3 volts will be going through this resistor. So using Ohm's law again, we know that the current is just going to be 3.3 divided by 10. So that's your voltage, that's your resistance. So you're going to get 0 0.33 amps. And then I'll just write down here, I of R3 is also going to be equal to 3.3. 3, sorry, divided by 20 this time. Now, if this is right, this should come out and these two added together should be 0 0.5. So if you do this here, and we'll do a little bit of rounding, not much, this would be 0 0.17 amps. The actual number is 1666 rare carrying, uh, but it all equals out. So you can see here, if we added these two together, 33 and 17, this would equal 0 0.5 amps, which is the total going through this part. The same with going through that part and that part and this part here. Okay, so move on to I now. I'll just do a little line down here just so we know that's not part of it. Okay, so uh, these last little bits are not too bad at all. We're looking for the voltage of R4. Um, now, remember I said earlier that we would have to find that C. So now you see, if we go up to, here it is, question D. We, we used voltage here to find out what the, the power was, even though we didn't have to. But you now you see, I've actually already figured it out. I already know what it is. I don't need to go and do any more calculations uh, at all. So that's a way of doing a calculation that needs to be done anyway, but finding answers that you know are going to be asked for later. So now I don't have to do any math, nothing. I can just write down here if I can find my pencil, that is. Um, that V of R4 is equal to 10.5 volts, done. And similar, uh, similar to this is for J, they're asking what the voltage of R1 is. Now oh, I can't remember if we did or didn't figure that out. Um, sorry guys. Well, I don't think we did. Um, but for this one, it's, it's nice and easy anyway. We know that R1, we did figure out what that was. Um, being silly and not finding it. Ah, oh, one here it is, 10.34. So just using Ohm's law again, we know the current is 0 0.5, and all we're doing is timesing it by 10.34, which is equal to 5.17 volts. And then lastly, we're asked, now the lastly it says use Kirchhoff's law to figure out the voltage going through uh, the parallel circuit, which is this, this part here, which we actually already know because we figured it out earlier. I swear we did. There it is. So I said we didn't actually have to figure that out, um, but we did to help out with this part. Well, we, we do have to figure it out, but it's asking us to use Kirchhoff's law. A Kirchhoff's law is saying that in a series circuit, we know that all the volt drops, so this volt drop, that volt drop, the equivalent volt drop here, and that volt drop has to equal to this voltage here. So we'll, we'll do it that way, just because that's the way that it's asked us to do so. 
so in, in this case, we'll say, oh, I've done it again. Sorry, guys. I might have to have a little play uh, this following week just so I'm not <laughs> messing this up again. Okay, so we're looking for, sorry, I'm lost where I am. Oh, that's right. Voltage of R2, uh, RR is not what we're looking for. What have we read it before? There we go. Oh, that's going to get a little bit confusing. Sorry, guys. Try to make it too confusing. Got little brackets in here. That's two in parallel with three. And that's another bracket there. So we're saying the voltage of the resistors two and three, basically, the ones that are in parallel. Okay, so we know that the total resist, uh, total uh, voltage for that whole circuit, so this is not looking at it being a voltage terminal, just looking at the voltage uh, as we did in the beginning. We know that's 20 volts, and that's going to be minusing... Now, do I write this all out? Um, so basically, I'll do the first one, and then I'll just actually write down what they are. You see here, for voltage terminal, we had 20, and then we minus 0 0.5 times 2. That this part here is a volt drop across R1. So all we're doing is saying 20 minus, and actually I'll go up here. Because it's asking for the voltage at this part, we're saying 20 minus this part, minus that part, and minus that. That should leave us with the voltage across here. Okay. So, zero point five times two. Okay, so that's just to give you the the picture. That's the amperage, and this is the the resistor. Uh, for the rest of it, I'm just going to write down what they actually are because we have figured them out. It's five point one seven minus. 10.5 those are the other two I think this is R1 and this is R4 and again we're going to find out that that's equal to 3.33 so obviously you can see there's a lot of different ways to figure things out and if I was you guys um, if they didn't say specifically use Kirchhoff's law then obviously doing something like this could be a lot easier if you already had to find out what the resistance is this is much easier than having to write down each and every single part here. But it's good to know this, just in case for whatever reason, let's imagine that this part here is really big and really hairy, very hard to figure out, um, that this could be another way of figuring it out. Okay, so that is, that's the first part, that's to do with our assignment. Um, so we're gonna just have a little five minute break, and then I'm gonna go over some things to do with revision. So obviously I sent that email out on another email, the message on uh, Moodle uh, last week about what you guys should look up. So I still suggest you do look that up. Um, when I'm going over this revision, some things I'll go over very briefly. I'll say, you know, learn what these are. Other parts I'll get into a little bit of detail and we'll go through some stuff. But for the most part, I just want to kind of give you the ideas of what you should be revising because these should be things that we have gone through already. Um, questions that we have had already so mainly just pointing in the right direction what what we need to be kind of looking at what you should be good at and um, what you should know this shouldn't be you learning anything new it should be just revising that being said if there's any questions you have again please send them through to me actually uh, quickly I'll just take the roll now um, so I'll just pop that up here so if you're gonna send just put a message I can kind of see who is here already um, but if you just want to, actually, in fact, if, if you're here right now, just type in your name right now, and then that's easier. All right, cool. Thanks for that, guys. Um, so just take take a five-minute break or, or whatever. Um, go to a little, get a drink, whatever you need, and then we'll fire through the uh, revision part. Like I said, looking at uh, atomic stuff, uh, atomic stuff is a very good description, um, atomic theory. Um, so I want you to know what, you know, an insulator is. 
So it's a little bit bad. Um, so right down here, valence. There are valence electrons that are, are, are tightly bound together. And there's usually about eight of them within that valence shell. Oh, that's right. So there's a tightly bound. Okay, conductor. Now, I'll just do this. This just means valence electrons. So they are loosely bound together. And you guys remember uh, the reason why it's an insulator? Uh, because they're tightly bound together, it's very hard to have free, free electrons that can be passed on to another atom. Um, and that's why they are so good at insulating and stopping um, electricity flowing through them. And the, the opposite with a conductor, you know, they're loosely bound together. And with this, there's usually only, only about one or two electrons. Um, so they can easily be forced to move to another atom. That's why they're conductors. That's why they can conduct electricity because you know the conduction with electricity is just electrons basically moving through different atoms um, which causes electricity to flow um, a semiconductor okay really Again, I'm just writing this down. This is just means valence electrons, just because I'm worried I will run out of space. Uh, so with this one, the valence electrons are shared. They're shared with neighboring atoms. Sorry if that's a little bit bad. Neighboring atoms. Uh, that's just briefly to go over it again. Obviously, you guys can go a little bit more into detail with this stuff. But, you know, it's important to know what insulators, conductors, and semiconductors are. Um, so that's kind of just the first little bit. I won't get rid of that, but I'll just move on. Okay, so another good thing to learn... I'll do this actually, this might be a bit easier. It's just, uh, I want you guys to revise what uh, things are used for. So, you know, like, um, I'll say uses, uses of materials in the industry. That is terrible materials, oh, that is right. And industry, industry practice. Uh, a few examples of this, just to give you guys a, a um, example of what I want you to kind of look over. Uh, so, for example, you know, you can kind of look up what copper, what aluminium is, is used for, uh, say mica. I'll just give the example of, of mica. Obviously, we, we kind of know a little bit more what copper and aluminium are used for because we see it a lot more often, but mica... One is uh, it's used as the die uh, that is nice, but dielectric. Sorry, it's the dielectric of a capacitor. So that's what I mean. I want you guys to kind of look up and make sure you know what what these sort of things are, what where they can be used. You guys have a big list in your your book, so just have a nosy at that. Make sure you're kind of familiar with um, more common ones where they're used. Um, yeah, of uh, capac. I'm not even sure if I spell that right. Yep. So that's horrible handwriting. So that's another one just to have a. I know that.
make sure you're kind of up to speed with what materials are used where. Okay, so another one to look at. Okay, so the formula here, resistance is equal to resistivity. Oh, there it is. Times your length of the cable divided by the cross sectional area of the cable. So this is finding the resistance of a, a cable. Um, so knowing how that works is quite important. Uh, knowing what will happen in, in any sort of scenario. So say we had a resistance here. And I won't use numbers for this, but this is more just an understanding side of things. Um, so if I was to say to you that the cross-sectional area would increase, so it would get bigger. So instead of it being this big, it would be yay big. Um, what would happen to your resistance? Now the answer is, of course, that it will go down. And do you remember I said in class, you know, you can kind of imagine it as if you're in a, a big um, hall and everyone's dancing um, <clears throat> and you're, you're trying to get from one side of the room to the other. If, um, if your hall is only this big, but you still have a thousand people, um, you can imagine that could be hard to get through or relatively hard. If you still only had a thousand people, but your hall got upgraded to this size, you can imagine that, that they would have to be spread out more. It would be easier for you to, to get from one end to the other. Um, so knowing things like that, obviously another one would be um, uh, length. If, if I said we're going to increase the length of this cable, so instead of only being this big, we would say it was this big. What would happen to the resistance? And you can use that same example with the hall. Um, you can think about it just like this. If the hall was only this long, and I said get from this side to that side, obviously that's going to be a lot shorter than getting from, from here, this side to that side. So your resistance would go up if you increased the length. You can see it takes longer to get from each side. And then finally, if you were to change the resistivity. Now resistivity is more thinking about the amount of people in your hall. I'm just going to draw two circles. Uh, let's say to begin with, your resistivity is just one. Excuse me. <coughs> so imagine you only have one person in the hall. Uh, you can see there's numerous ways I can get through. I can, I can get through a lot of ways. Um, but if I said, you know, your res resistivity is going to be increased and you're going to have heaps of people in here this is a terrible drawing of people but lots of them now you can see the image you know between this just this one lonely person here to let's say a thousand or so I'm, i've got to think about where i've got to go it's going to be a lot harder for me to get from one side to the other so if i increase the resistivity then my resistance will also go up and vice versa with if i get go from say a high number to a smaller number um, that's going to bring me to my second part, which is talking about uh, resistivity. Ooh. Now again, resistivity is this symbol here. I'll just write that. Resist. Not very good at doing little dots, are they? Tiv. Oh gosh, sorry guys. Resistivity. Okay, so I just want to have a little look at that as well to make sure you guys understand um, the difference between them when we actually look at some, some numbers. Which we'll just zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I've got a few examples here. Um, and one is going to be a conductor, one's an insulator, and one is a semiconductor. Uh, maybe you guys can just kind of practice now. I'll just write down here LU, that's aluminium. Uh, the resistivity of that is 2.82 times 10 to the power of negative 8. Now remember if we're times something to the power of negative 8, that's quite a small number. Um, now we'll look at glass. 
and that is just 1 times 10 to the power of 11. Now obviously you can see now that's quite a that's much higher number. It's to the power of 10, it's not negative. Um, yep, and then finally we've got silicon. Um, now this one here is 6.4 times 10 to the power of 2. Now okay, this, this to the power of 2 is definitely, uh, it's higher than negative 8 by a long shot, in fact, but it's also, it, it's a lot smaller than to the power of 11, so it's kind of in the middle ground. So if you were guys going to choose which one would be a conductor, which is obviously conductors are less resistive, uh, things that are more resistive are insulators, and things that are sort of in between are semiconductors, because they can conduct, but only when they get to a certain limit. So of course the answer is aluminium is a conductor. Now see, f looking at something like this, you wouldn't actually have to remember off by heart, although I'm sure you do remember that aluminium, aluminium sorry I can't even say that, is a conductor. Um, but you, if you're just looking at the resistivity of it, you can, you can just see right there, it's such a small number, it's not very resistive to electro electrical flow you know it's it's not at all whereas glass is it's, it's much higher so this here is your insulator and then finally something that's kind of in the middle ground you know it's to the power of two maybe three maybe even four it's somewhere in between which these materials are semiconductors so just kind of Go over that resistivity. Uh, make sure you understand which ones are more resistive, ones which ones are less. Know that the ones that are very small are, can conduct very well. Ones that are very high uh, have great insulators. They're very good at blocking it. Ones that are in the middle are, are semi. They're kind of, but not not fully. And that's all. We'll look at that bit for now. Um, and then lastly, just on that on that note, the difference between resistance, oh, it's not what I want, resistance and resistivity. So, resistance, and resistivity. This is the measured, unit of resistance, how much resistance there is, and this is how resistive, how resistive a material is. Because remember, obviously, uh, this is a measured unit, that totally depends on how long the cable was, remember we were looking before, um, it depends on this here. It depends on how long it is, what's the cross-sectional area. Um, so obviously that can change with many different stuff, but the resistivity of something is always the same because we can measure how resistive a type of material is. So that's knowing the difference between how resistive certain materials are. Okay, so another one I want you guys to look at is going to be, man, I always do that. Sorry, guys. It's just simply just resistive, resistor types. Now, I know I didn't go over this too much in class, but that's because you guys have a massive list in your book that goes over the types. Yeah, I kind of went over what nonlinear, what linear ones are. You know, you have like a thermostat and that can change its resistance with, with temperature. Um, things that V equals IR, which is Ohm's law, that they can't apply to certain resistors. There's a big list of them. Some of them are made of different materials. Um, so I want you guys to, to look at all those different types of ones, know what they are. And just to give you an example of, of, of what I'm thinking you guys should be looking at, as I say, an example was a carbon resistor. I'll just call it carbon res for short. 
Uh, so, you know, a carbon resistor, we know uh, these are the fixed value ones. These are the ones that I was showing you normally like through holes. You know, if you've got the bands on them, you can you can read the, the color-coded bands. Um, obviously, they're, they're made out of, of, of carbon and other uh, mixes of materials. That one I'm sure is fairly obvious. Um, they... <clears throat> And then, you know, where are they used? What, what do we use them for? Um, like, for example, this a carbon resistor, electronic circuits. And there's many other things it's used for, but I want you to know like a little bit of each, just a little bit of each so that you've got a fair idea of what ones are used for what. So go through your list, you know, thermostats, rheostats, um, all those just to make sure you, you kind of know a little bit of each what's going on with them and then also oh, finally I forgot to say how, how to draw it as well uh, in your books it shows you the, the drawing so obviously for a carbon one and this is the one we use in our, our circuits the ones I was showing you before it's just this I'm just doing these little quotations just to show you what I'm looking for uh, fixed sorry I should say fixed value um, it's made out of carbon materials. This is this is what it looks like when you when you draw it down on a piece of paper to indicate that it's just a carbon resistor. And we use it in electronic circuits. So you should be looking at those sorts of um, things when revising the types of uh, resistors. Okay, I think we're almost done, guys. Yeah, the last one I want to have a look at um, is just the different types of resistors um, so I'm just going to draw up one resistor here mm. well, sorry guys this is again this is horrible there we go looks more like a dog bone than a resistor but so long as you guys get the uh, the picture Now, surely I can do different colors here. Okay, that's really not big at all, but I don't want to try that just in case. Marker, any bigger? Okay, so where's my example? Blue. Have like a purple or violet here. Have a red that really doesn't look like red, I like pink. Okay, sorry guys, that looks very similar to this color here. Um, and then lastly, we'll have just like a goldish color at the end. Um, so I want you guys to be able to figure out what these are here. Now you do have a, uh, a book, uh, sorry, a table in your books that will tell you what it is, what ones are which, but we need to know how to read this. So if we were to go back to my pencil, just go back to black, we know that for this bit here, the first digit is this line here. So I'll just tell you this one, it's uh, six. For this first bit, again, you'll have the tables in your book. Uh, I think in the exam, they also will probably give you a table. It's a pretty big table. I don't expect them to make you um, remember it off by heart. Um, then you have a second digit, which is this purple one here, which is just seven. Now, this next line is your multiplier. So we look at our table and it says 10 to the power of two. And this bit here, from memory should be 5%. That's what it says gold is. So now if we look at this, I'll just write this first, second, and then multi, just for multiplier. And then this last one is your tolerance. Remember tolerance is just saying, if you ask for a, a thousand ohms, that when they produce it for you, it's going to be give or take 5%. They're saying that they know they'll be accurate within 5% of that. 
of what you've asked for. So first digit is six, second is seven. I'll just write here resistance. <clears throat> and then that's times 10 to the power of two, which is just equal to 6,700 or 6.7 K ohms. Doesn't matter if you write it this way or if you write it this way, I'm happy with either or. Right, so as so long as you guys kind of know what's going on there, um, I think we'll be, we'll be pretty good. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else you guys should know or need to know. Uh, like um, knowing the differences between um, measured and calculated, how to figure out, how you guys can figure out a, um, a difference between something. Um, so this one's not, not much at all, it's not going to take long. I quite liked number two better. Okay, so let's say, um, oh, that is horrible. <laughs> Sorry. In fact, I won't even uh, do that. All I'm looking for is if I told you you had 100 uh, and then another number, 90, Obviously, you can see here, if I ask you what the difference is, I'll just say diff. But I ask you for a percentage. Here, you can just do 100 divided by 90. And if you look at your calculator, you just go 100 divided by 90. You see this bit here? It says 1.1111. This, after the dot, this bit is your percentage. So it's 11.111, reoccurring forever. So you never look at this bit here. You're looking at the second part, and the first digit is, is, is the 1 and 1, which is 11, and then you do a little point here. So I could say that's equal to a 11... 0.11% difference. That's just something else um, to point out that you should be able to do. It's not too hard. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much it. If you guys just go through your um, all your classwork or your quizzes, uh, your assignments, just please um, yep, email me any Anything you need help with, and I'll try to help you. Uh, anything if you just want to fire through, I can always look at uh, putting in the next lecture as well. Um, but from me, I think that's just about it. For now, you guys have one week, I believe. Yep, one week off. Uh, so enjoy that. Stay safe. And um, yeah, we'll see you, see you in a week, no, two weeks' time. Uh, yeah, enjoy. I'll see you guys.